what the world could be like for our product, for our service, for our organization, for our company, right? If we supported accessibility and why it matters to the company and to the brand, right? I would never try to sell accessibility as you must do it because it's ethically right. Because usually nobody listens to me when I do that, right? And I wouldn't say that, oh, um, it's the right thing to do. Also, because most of the time, you know, they think that there is other, there are other things that are right to do, right? Again, attracting more eyeballs might also be seen as the right thing to do. So when we speak about those things, we need to be very strategic about how exactly we speak about it. And usually I would be trying to kind of paint that picture about what accessibility means for the company. Because there is a very strong perception that this is basically just for disabled people or people who have a personal health condition and that's it. Now this has changed a lot because today when we look at disability, it's seen as a mismatch of human interaction, right? And there is a very interesting pattern that started emerging in design process. And this has been happening on many different levels. This is an example that's coming from Booking.com. And on Booking.com, they took the Microsoft's inclusive design toolkit, which basically maps the different uh, ways of interacting, right? Uh, the touch, the seeing, the hearing, the reading, right? Across a few different views, like a permanent, temporary, situational, and then the bookings view, travel, right? So you take the Microsoft Toolkit about, again, every single sort of uh, experience that you might have related to touch, seeing, hearing, reading, and so on, could be, of course, distracted personal, permanently because you have one arm, or temporarily because you have an arm injury, or situationally, because you have, you're a new parent and you hold a baby in your hands, right? Or, in the case of booking, it would be that you might experience an inaccessible flight, right? And then if you're looking into seeing, well, you could be blind, but you could also have a cataract, or just don't like or be the bl kind of blinded by bright lights, or you could have a distracted driver, right? So again, if you start doing this, all of a sudden, the accessibility is perceived very differently in your organization. Right? And if you actually keep going, I really love what they ended up doing here. Really mapping the permanent condition to situational conditions, to temporary conditions, to conditions that are actually relevant directly to customers that are operating with this business. This is actually uh, an example of uh, building up sort of an accessibility mapping, if you like, right? And that's really, really interesting there. Uh, because this is an example from Gov.uk, which is exactly the same idea, but applied to court right? I think it's really personalizes this experience massively, right? So the first thing I would try to do is to create something like this for any company or product organization that I'm working in, to make it a bit more relatable or a little bit easier to relate. So when we speak about accessibility, we don't speak about it in broad terms, right? So that I think is really, really significant there.